Not the first time that the Socceroos would have qualified if they do make it through to the knockout stage, the round of 16. Andy Raymond, unfiltered, is the man's podcast, his handle. He joins us. Welcome back, pal. Hello, legend. How are you? I'm good. Are we, uh, we are waiting a start in the cricket, the one day here. Can tell you we've had India over here for three t t twenties, three one days. Yeah. First T20 washed out. Second one was played. Third one washed out. First one day I played. Second one washed out. So only half the match has been able to be completed. I don't know about you. I know you've got a test series starting this afternoon as well against the West Indies in Perth. Mate, I, it's not that I'm cricketed out, but I just think my cup was overflowing after the T20 World Cup. What about you? 100% and the fans are voting with their feet. We played England three times in uh, in the tra- you know the tra- more traditional short form, the 50 over game following the, the T20 World Cup. Uh, they were really badly supported. The television ratings were horrible. Uh, neither side really gave two hoots about it. They, they both rested their captain. I think it was game number two. Um, we've spoken about this before, mate, and there is no bigger cricket tragic than myself I'm more of a test match guy but something needs to change in terms of the scheduling everyone's cup is full exactly like you everyone's cricket cup is full and it's only the end of November yeah, we should yeah. we should be just getting into this um, I'd love to think in my little fancy world that there's that there's enough time and there's enough room for tests 50 over and 20 over games. There's not, though, bro. Um, there ain't, though, bro. And the, the, calendar, the calendar needs to be judged. I, I don't think I'll ever see cricket as a 12-month-of-the-year game, but I think that's where the administrators and the money grab is at the moment. And for me, it's just, it, you know, there's too much of it. There, there's just too much. Well, okay, outside of, of India, and I respect totally the fact, Andy, that they love the IPL there. It's in their backyard, and and, and, and and it becomes for two months of the year the only tournament and cricket that's being played. That's the power that the BCCI have. But you yeah. tell me anyone else. Walk around Australia and, oh, you know, I, show me the, the, the biggest 100 cricket fans in the country, and I bet 90 of them would not be able to tell me who won the IPL two years ago, who won it the year before that, who won it, what other T20, who won the Caribbean, who won... No one cares, mate. That's the point. Yeah, that's the cricket we're getting stuffed with. Absolutely. You, you, you bang on the money there, mate. Um, we, we love our cricket. We enjoy our cricket. and It is a great game just to to unwind to and to chill out to. But really, if it if it's not involving our home nation, very few of us, a really low percentage, would actually tune in. And oh, a lot of my mates are, are bigger cricket tragics than I'm, but they, have, they wouldn't have watched an IPL or a Caribbean T20 game ever. Not ever. Maybe the first series, just to see what it was all about. Um, but that's the stroke that the um, you know the, the the authorities have over in in the subcontinent. They um, they get the cricket calendar cleared for their tournament yep. and for their money grab. It, it is amazing the power that's never going to change simply because of the, the volume of people over there and the volume of, of money over there. So that's not going to change. So something else has to give. But but I hope it's not that passion that we grew up you know really embracing, mate. Let's talk about this West Indian versus Australian series. First test underway today, 3.20pm our time, for 42 minutes away for the start in yeah. Perth. And just for the for the younger listeners and younger members of the audience, Australia and the West Indies have just got such a history when it comes to test cricket. Back in the 1970s, Lily and Tomo absolutely manhandled the West Indies, who then came back, of course, with their pace quartet and had Kim Hughes, the captain, bawling his eyes out on TV and resigning the captaincy. It started then, didn't it, for real? It, it did, and I still have memories of of watching the West Indies and and that famous quartet you mentioned bowling against the Australians at the Wacker pitch. And the Wacker was always the hard pitch, and, and it had plenty of bounce. And the West Indies would would go head hunting for half of a Test match, and there'd be four or five slips and two gullies because players and batsmen were just defending their chin as, as much as they were their wickets. An amazing period, an amazing history between the two sides. But the West Indies have won just one of its past 27 test matches against Australia. The West Indies 
probably more than anyone have been disrupted by the T20 format of the game and the, and the money up for grabs. They're flamboyant. They love it. Chris Gale led that. Um, and, and I think there's probably too many, ele- for my liking anyway, too many elements in the West Indies cricket that would prefer T20 to mm-hmm. Test Match cricket, yeah, which, yeah. which is a terrible, terrible shame. Big Clive Lloyd, he'd be, he'd be filthy at something like that. Just, just in terms of uh, Andy Raymond unfiltered as well. Just in terms of, of how young people in Australia look at it, you know, we've got such a small pool of players to choose from for our men's black cap side, and probably even a thinner yep. for the women. Why, as a young person, would you go out there, grind away in the nets, facing a red ball, and try and perfect your technique when you might only be playing? We only play seven test matches a year here, anyway. I mean, you probably play a bit more as an opening bat, which is the hard, I believe the hardest single job in the, in, in, the, in sport yep. in the world in any sport is to open a open a cricket test facing that new ball. You can get sawn off by the umpire, you can get run out by your teammate, you can face a peach of a ball and go out and wait for two days. Why would you do that when you can sit there practicing your baseball bat swing, knocking it over the neighbor's fence, and actually getting a T20 cricket reward somewhere. Why would you? Uh, exactly right, mate. It, it, everything is pointing towards the future being T20. Um, they're, they're not going to bowl, you know, breathtaking bounces end on end on end in a T20 game. So you've got your personal safety, which is bloody yeah, lovely yeah. to have. Mm-hmm. But um, why would you try and perfect that art? And it is, mate, it is the hardest job. Yeah, totally. I agree with be, you. Yeah. That's the hardest job in professional sport. But why would you do that for a, a much smaller payday and a lot bigger workload when this generation has been brought up watching T20 cricket? It looks amazing because it is amazing, but it's just not what we, what us old bastards think is amazing. Yeah, totally. But it's absolutely, mate. I, I'd be, you know, if I was 12 years of age, I'd be trying to perfect the reverse ramp yeah, and the, the yeah. sweep and the hit between my legs, and, you know, whatever, to play T20 and collect. Yeah, and you just imagine, people, how terrifying that would have been. You had a guy called Whispering Death, for God's sake, OK? Uh, your padding was, you might have put a penthouse magazine down the front of your shorts. There was no padding in those days, was there? I mean, you invented no. it yourself. Half the pitches weren't covered. There was a no-bouncer rule. They could bounce it at your body for five balls and then aim the last one at the wickets or aim it at your head. And then when he finished, you had another guy at the end, you had Courtney Walsh or you had Big Bird. I mean, it was just relentless, wasn't it? It was one after the other after the other. How tough a man faces that? I mean, I just don't think we acknowledge ever how goddamn hard it was back then. A man much tougher than I, you know, Thank whether you. it was Holding, Garno or, you know, Malcolm Marshall or, or Roberts or whoever it was. And there was no reprieve. It wasn't as though uh, Marshall and Garner, uh, you know, opened the bowling and then, you know, you got a reprieve against a second stringer. Um, you know, then a Roberts or a, an Ambrose or a Holding had come on and, and pepper you with exactly the same thing. Far braver than I am, mate. Far braver than I am, these guys. A couple of other topics to talk about. I want to ask you about the Dolphins, how they're tracking ahead of the NRL season. This is ARU, Andy Raymond Unfiltered. Also about the Socceroos and that crucial match tomorrow against Denmark. But how shaky and thin is the ice that Greg Norman is standing on at the moment? When Tiger Woods backs up McElroy and says, you've got to go or else there is no resolution. And look, Live Golf want a resolution. They can't hang the outside and they can't fly out there pretending that they're part of golf when they're not allowed to play the majors because eventually people are just going to look the other way and go, okay, the majors are on and you're not in it. How long yep. has Greg Norman got? I see that, you know, Live Golf, the boss, has said, oh, no, he's perfectly okay, he's absolutely safe in his job, but that's the Italian football chairman saying, pack your bags now, pal, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. This is the big one for me. This is the big one, and I know McElroy has said it, but when a guy like Tiger Woods says it, it, it really generates headlines and it, it, it becomes a big, big story. And I think for all his faults and, and the grudges or the, um, uh, the issues and rivalries that Tiger may have inside a golf dressing room, I think they all respect him and they, they know he's a genuine dude at heart and he's got their best interests at heart. And the fact that Tiger's come out and says Greg has to go as commissioner, massive. And, and I, look, I'd, I'd love to think this is being logical, but I would love to think this is the, the beginning of that to happen. 
not a lot of headlines about live golf and not a lot of care about live golf over this side of the ditch, mate. I'll be really honest. I think Aussies love watching golf. We love watching Cameron Smith do his thing and gee, hasn't he been doing it well? But who owns it, where it's played? Yeah, not overly interesting to Australians as a sports story. Uh, this is an administrative story and, and I hate them. Um, like, because it takes the headlines away from the good stuff, and the good stuff is the sportsmen and the feats that they're able to produce. It's, it's like another rugby union story talking about the boardroom, Marty. Mm. Who cares? Yeah. Who yeah. No, no, cares? No, no. At the same Listen, time, you know, though, you know, Super League and the NRL had to get back in bed together at some stage. Is, is, is that yeah. what, you know, and Live Golf you know, has to do it with the PGA at some stage. It'll be a watch this space. All right. The Dolphins, how are they tracking, mate? And as a, as a rugby league... As a rugby league guru, what do you genuinely expect from them in their first year? Not a whole lot, to be honest. Um, I don't think it's an issue of who they've got, but I think it's an issue of what time of their career they've got some of these guys. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll pick out three from the Melbourne Storm in the Bromwich Brothers, Jesse and Kenny, and also Felice Cafusi. Firstly, three guys that have been wonderful servants for Melbourne, for New Zealand, for Queensland. Uh, and wonderful players, you know, really elite level players. But in the last two years, all three, their, their impact their, and their relevance, I guess, for me, hasn't been what it was. They're in the twilight of their career. They're going to set a really solid foundation in terms of culture, in terms of professionalism, in terms of attitude. But culture, professionalism and attitude doesn't necessarily win your games. Three older guys, they've got to helm this new club. Uh, I don't think they've got the mix right. I don't think they've got the ages right um, and the experience levels right. I, Craig Bellamy doesn't let go of guys that he doesn't want to let go of and he's let go of all three. And that, to me, is a really telling uh, a stat or an opinion because yes, yes. Bellamy is the he's the coach of our generation, the most successful, the most well respected, and he doesn't let players go that he doesn't want to go. Um, but he's let these three go. He's probably let them go with the understanding is they've been great servants, you're great fellas. But, boys, you're in the twilight and it's time for a 22-year-old to take your place. They're so perceptive of you, mate. And also, it's, you know, I think for most of us, you know, when, we, when you're looking at setting up a new side, that's the first thing that you're actually looking at and asking. How much go do these players have in them? How much do they have left? How much do they really want to risk their bodies? How much are they prepared to really put the foot down? I know that they're getting a lot of money, but I just look at the Gold Coast and I just think, when when have they really attracted a nucleus of players who are bitter and fight and have something to fight for for that club? We haven't seen it. No, and, and look, building, building the culture in any sporting organisation... Uh, Absolutely crucial. It doesn't matter if it's netball, cricket or, or rugby league. But to build the culture within that club to ensure that the badge on your jersey actually means something is a is a really difficult job. But, it, you know, I, I don't know if it should be the footballer's job. The footballer plays football and someone else maybe needs to decide what the, the jersey and what the emblem on the jersey means. Uh, good luck to Kenny, Jesse and Felice. I wish them nothing but success. Uh, they've earned a very good dollar uh, making the decision they have made. And no doubt they'll be terrific for the Dolphins in a depleted side this in next year. But I, I don't see them doing anything special for the first couple of years, mate. I, in fact... They're going to struggle for the first couple, if we're being honest. Andy Raymond Unfilter, before we get on to the Socceroos, I'm going to ask you this question every week now that we talk until the season starts. One out of ten, one being a dead set cert, ten being toilet. What is the number you give to the Warriors making the eight? Five. Oh, you're a generous sod. You jo What? Are you just saying that? No. Yeah, we're good. No, what the no, hell? I mean, come on, man. Not. We've hardly won a single game the last three years. What gives you that? I think there's been a couple of really astute buys, okay. in particular Mitch Barnett and uh, and Luke Metcalf. Luke Metcalf is going to put pressure on Sean Johnson 
like you won't believe. Good. And, and SJ was off a little last year. Oh, well, he's Some always injured, mate. Were good. Never bloody there, mate. He's always injured. Yeah, uh, I, I, I get that. But some of his stats were good, and the super coach fans would know that, and they thought he was marvellous. I thought he was off. Luke Medcalf, a young kid from the New South Wales mid, uh, mid-north coast, a real gun. But Mitch Barnett is the guy that doesn't have too many friends on a footy field. Why? Because he's tough and he doesn't care. He's got, he's got a bit of Brent Tate, a bit of Kevin Campy, and a bit of Steve Price in him as this Mitch Barnett. Um, he's going to toughen the boys up. He's going to toughen the boys up, and I think he, he's going to be that, uh, that leader, that security guard for, for the side, and I think he's going to make a big difference. And the Warriors were at their best when there was a mixture of natural talent and experienced hard edge. And I think Barnett brings that hard edge. Finally, then, the Socceroos. I've got the best till last. Uh, the win against Tunisia puts Aussie into a great position. A draw against Denmark gets you through to the round of 16. How big a deal is this? Are you going to get up to watch? Is Australia in love with their footy team? Australia is in love with their footy team for a couple of weeks every four years. Me, uh, mate, I'm just, I'm just not a... I'm not a football guy, and and that really hurts to say football because football I think is played with a with a, uh, a funny shape, shape ball, yeah, not a, yeah. Not, not a round ball. Um, I, I wish them all all the best. I'm as patriotic as anyone, so yes, I'll be cheering, but I'll be cheering in my sleep. I don't know how many years or decades it's been since I've watched a full game of soccer. It, you know, it might be twenty years to be to be totally honest. I just don't. Uh, it doesn't get me. It doesn't get me. But it gets a whole lot of people in Australia and all around the world. And, mate, it is big news over here, but just not big news in my house. Mm, that's all right. OK, I mean, will they be heroes if they do make that? I mean, look, do remember, oh, cast your yeah. mind back to 2005 or six. it was when that penalty from Aloisi oh, against Uruguay got you through to the World Cup. How big a deal that was? It was huge, 206, and, and there's probably the last one that I watched. But, um, <laughs> you know, the great Johnny Aloisi. Go on. Um, and that was fabulous. Look, these guys are superstars already, Marty. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll be brutally honest. They, they are superstars, and 95% of the country is behind them, cheering them, watching them, celebrating every emotion. Uh, I'm just one of the 5% that's cheering them quietly, but uh, not overly interested. Which ARU. Sounds it's, no, it's fine, man. It's fine. It's fine. ARU. Like I mean, you don't have to explain to it. ARU, Andy Raymond Unfiltered. What's on your pod this week? Uh, good one this week. Alan Tung delivers his dream team. Tyson Frizzell drops in for a chat. Brilliant. And former Tiger Mark Buckets O'Neill drops in as well, mate. Good week. Andy Raymond, Unfiltered, thank you so much. Joins us every single Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>